Welcome back. Time for a little history quiz. What famous American gave a speech decrying how black citizens live on an island of poverty in the midst of a vast ocean of material prosperity and of the tranquilizing drug of gradualism? Answer, it was Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And he said it in his famous I Have a Dream speech. The fact that key parts of one of the most famous speeches in all of American history are unknown to so many of us is simply indicative of how we've struggled to tell the history of not just Dr. King, but of all African Americans in this country. Joining me now are Keith Mays, an associate professor of African American and African Studies at the University of Minnesota, and Joshua Johnson, anchor of Now Tonight, my colleague also at NBC News and NBC News Now. Welcome to both of you. Keith, let me frame the conversation this way. Rashid Darden in Education Week back in 2018 wrote the following. And I think it, it very much is true today. Students don't typically have a great understanding of the Civil War, Reconstruction, the Jim Crow South, the racist North. There's really not much after Harriet Tubman until we get to the Civil Rights Movement. Their body of knowledge is focused on those couple of things rather than the interconnectedness, the intersections. And, and I think that's why I want to have this conversation and not almost utter the words uh, critical race theory, because really what this is about is how do we improve the education of history in America. Keith, where do we begin? We begin by telling the truth, Chuck. I mean, I think you are right that all of these things are interconnected. Uh, I was listening to the conversation you had with Nicole Hannah-Jones, and 1619 in, indeed is a starting point, uh, but we have to talk about uh, the black colonial American experience or the experience of, of people of color uh, pre-American Revolutionary War, but also, you know, what was going on in the new, new national period of the uh, turn of the, the, the 18th century uh, leading up to uh, the 19th century and the Civil War, abolition, uh, reconstruction, uh, uh, the post-reconstruction period, uh, progressivism. I think that in many ways, Chuck, I think we have missed an opportunity to, to understand what that through line has been from the very beginning, whether it's 1619 when the first 20 Africans were brought here or 1607 uh, when white people uh, came here all the way up to 2021. I mean, I think that there is something that is important for us to understand as we connect the dots throughout uh, the, all of the centuries uh, that this country has been uh, the United States, even the, uh, the colonial period. You know, Joshua, we also have this other pattern when we do teach uh, parts of African-American histories. We fight it. Think the do Just think about the Dr. King holiday. Then when it's accepted, it gets watered down. Think about how I opened this segment about how, you know, how few people actually know all of the contents and substance of the I Have a Dream speech. How do we get out of that trap? Well, I think first we have to decide how much you need to know and when. I mean, there's a reason that we think carefully about the way that we write stories for the news. We don't tell you everything all at once. We have to figure out what to tell you first and then what to tell you next based on where you are and what you probably already know of the story. I mean, there was a documentary that just came out about the creation of Sesame Street. And one of the first things they did before they created the series was they did research with small children to see what they were already watching. And they used the impact of existing commercial television to build a program that would take children as they were and educate them in line with what they were already exposed to. I think that might be one of the missing pieces. It's not just what we need to tell people, but how we need to listen, how we need to receive where America is now and work with the nation we have to build a nation we want. I mean, in Antonia Hilton's piece earlier, you heard that state lawmaker from Texas talking about not wanting white children to be taught that they're superior just because they're white and that black children are inferior just because they're black. That is a huge win. Think about what that means. In the context of the history of this country, having a white person say they don't want their white children taught that, that's something you can build on, even if that's a person who's like, critical race theory scares me. OK, fine. We'll get to that later. Where are you now? I think we don't have a clear understanding of what America is ready to discuss now, because that's a need we can meet today. You know, Keith, one of the things I've thought about is, you know, it was 1975 that, a, that the president then, Gerald Ford, uh, essentially declared February Black History Month. 
and it has served as a tool for educators to at least begin a uh, some teaching of African American history. Um, there's a part of me that thinks if if President Biden, de- if we didn't have that, and President Biden declared it today, we'd be having a uh, um, an, a very polarizing conversation about it. <laughs> Absolutely right, Chuck. Because you know the the extension of uh, Black History Month from Negro History Week, the great Carter G. Woodson created that uh, back in the uh, 1920s, and it really flourished in the 1930s and 40s. That was the way that we actually taught Black history in public schools for many decades. This week uh, of celebration, and 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 what Carter G. Woodson envisioned was this thing that scholars call contributionism. You know, what is the Black contribution to science and 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 Mm -hmm. uh, business and education and that was a kind of a a easy fluffy history to place the black uh, contribution side by side with with whites but the civil rights movement did something very important it demanded that black history uh, is not embraced uh, 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 just in one week of February but we want to actually begin to talk about what it means to be to be black all year round and so the, it's really the American bicentennial moment in uh, 1976, Chuck, mm-hmm. that opens up the calendar to extend that week into uh, uh, a th- a three additional weeks into one whole month. But I have to say that uh, black history is still ossified and frozen uh, in time in that one month in the calendar year. And then once uh, February 28th or 29th, depending on the, the year, once that, that goes, we are... Uh, back to 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 really talking about not talking about black history and the concerns of African Americans, uh, and and their their uh, the things that that they care about, whether it's social justice movements or what have you, we don't revisit it again until the next year. So this perennializing, this right. annualizing of black history that's been around uh, since Carter, since the early days of Carter G. Woodson, we have not really moved beyond that. Uh, even in 2021. And that feels like, Joshua, how this debate opened up, is that there are educators who are trying to say, you know, it it isn't a month. This is American history. Uh, Good, bad, ugly. American history. And it seems that this is where the pushback comes in. Uh, Look, I'm a cynic. This feels like it's almost all being done for political gain short term. Um, I'm an optimist. I think over time we'll get better at this. But I guess the question is, how long is it going to take? I think it's happening. I mean, there's another piece of the equation that we can't forget, and that's young people themselves. Mm -hmm. This debate about talking about race is over. Young people are doing it on their own. They are Googling the pink elephant that you told them not to talk about, and they're fascinated by this. So they're falling down Wikipedia rabbit holes about the truth about race in this country and talking about it with their friends as if this never occurred. I'm just not sure that there's actually going to be as much power in these laws Mm -hmm. as lawmakers think. I think there's going to be a lot of very resentful kids who realize that their parents were trying to hide the truth from them or lie to them about something fundamental about who they are. So uh, the curriculum is part of it. Young people aren't dumb. They know that if you don't want them to know this, there must be something important there, and they might well Google it behind your back. In fact, I think they already are. I, as with two teenagers in my house, trust me, I'm well aware of that fact. Anyway, Keith Mays, uh, Joshua Johnson, I hope uh, you've both had wonderful uh, New Year's uh, uh, and a wonderful New Year and have had a Merry Christmas. Thank you both for coming on. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.